So I've never really done this kind of a video before, so bear with me here. I just decided I wanted to talk about the best pitchers in baseball right now as of 2023, and so why not rank them? So let's get right into my top 10 list, starting from 10 and moving our way up to 1. Starting at number 10, this was tough because there are a lot of guys I'd like to squeeze in at the bottom of my list, but Spencer Strider just seems too good to leave off. I feel like his ceiling is really high. He throws incredibly hard, has nasty off-speed stuff like his slider. He strikes out a ton of guys. I mean, he was limited to just a little over 130 innings last year because of it being his rookie season and starting out the year in the bullpen, yet struck out over 200 hitters. Imagine if he pitches 30 or 40 more innings. We're talking arguably the best strikeout guy in the game for a starting pitcher. He's just so good. Yes, this is just his second true year in the big league, so there's not a lot of years worth of sample size, but I trust in Strider to be a force in 2023 and beyond. Max Freed, Strider's Braves teammate, is a guy who's really good too, but I just find Strider to have a higher ceiling when it's all said and done. Next up at number 9 comes Max Scherzer. Now, the reason he's so low in this list, along with the next guy at number 8, is because of the age, and in Scherzer's case, he was a little banged up last year. If I was really concerned about his health going into 2023, though, he wouldn't be on this list at all. So, Max Scherzer is still the man, and someone who is clearly one of the greatest pitchers of all time. As far as right now, though, 2023, he's number 9 out of 10 for me. Number 8, Scherzer's former and now new slash current teammate on the Mets, Justin Verlander. Verlander just won the American League Cy Young Award for the third time in his luxurious career, and he did it in his first year coming back from Tommy John surgery along with the fact that he was pushing 40. Well, now he is 40, so that's really the only reason I have him on the lower end of my top 10. He's still elite, but age is a thing, and I wouldn't be that surprised to see him regress, but also wouldn't be surprised if he does insanely good again, so we'll see. But yeah, number 8 for JV. Coming in at number 7 is Mr. Bieber, the superior one, so obviously not Justin. Shane Bieber just continues to pitch like an ace. He eats up innings and limits the other team from scoring. It's that simple. He's just a good ace for Cleveland. His strikeout numbers may have been a little down last year, but he still threw over 200 innings for the second time in his career, a career that hasn't been that long yet, while pitching to a sub-3 ERA. He's also only 27 years old, barely just entering his prime, so Cleveland's got a good reliable arm on their hands, and someone I'd comfortably take over mostly anyone other than the six guys ahead of him on my list. Number six is Alec Manoa. Now, really quick, I feel like Garrett Cole and Manoa could have been swapped here and either name would have made sense, at least to me. Cole, of course, has way more experience, years and innings under his belt, but he did allow a ton of home runs last year and overall didn't have a great second half of the season, at least not one that Cole should be pitching. So I'm going to go with Manoa here. I feel like he's a bit safer to pick. 2023 will be just his third year in the league, but he has shown no sign of regression or any type of step backwards in his development. He threw almost 200 innings last year, his second year in the big leagues, all with an ERA a little over two. He's just a reliable starting pitcher who's showing he can eat up innings and limit runs. Again, I know it's simple, but those two things are what make a good pitcher good. And oh yeah, Manoa is also 24 years old. He's so young and is already pitching like an ace who's been in the league at least half a decade. Number five is Framber Valdez. Framber Valdez is nasty. Valdez, to me, is someone who I think gets overlooked a lot. He's just pretty much entering the prime of his career as he's only around 29 years old, pitched to an ERA of 2.82 last year while simultaneously throwing the most innings in the American League at 201 and a third, going the distance three times with one of them being a complete game shutout. He's the definition of quality start after quality start, and I'd take him any day of the week including the postseason, the biggest, brightest stage, a place where he has delivered as well. Next up at number 4 is Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns really jumped onto the scene in 2021, obviously when he won the Cy Young Award, but he didn't really show any sign of regression in 2022. I mean, his stats weren't quite as good, but they were still some of, if not the best in the league. His strikeouts per 9 was down from the year prior, yet he still struck out the most hitters in the National League. He doesn't allow many guys on base, he strikes people out, and he also threw over 200 innings last year, something I think he can continue to do. He's only 27 years old too. I mean, the dude is going to get paid when he becomes a free agent, so the Brewers better appreciate him while they still can. He's young, has nasty strikeout stuff, and eats up innings. He's incredible. But I couldn't put him over Shohei Otani at number 3. Shohei is Shohei. We all know what he can do with the bat and what he does on the mound. He's just a freak of nature. But talking about what he does on the mound specifically, he throws over 100 miles an hour with a nasty wipeout slider. A year ago, he wouldn't have made it this high in my list 
because he hadn't proven he can stay healthy and pitch a full year's worth of innings, but 2022 certainly got him a lot of trust with me. He threw 166 innings with a 2.33 ERA, striking out 219 hitters and having the best strikeouts per nine in the American League. There's nothing more to say. I don't care that he hits, too. Shohei is a top three pitcher right now. Number two, Sandy Alcantara. Any organization would kill to get a guy like Sandy to pluck into the top of the rotation. He does it all. He makes every start, eats up innings in those starts, strikes enough guys out, and limits guys crossing the plate. I mean, I feel like I've said this a lot already, but sometimes it can just be that simple. He throws a lot of innings and doesn't give up many runs. Does he have the most strikeouts in the game? No, he still strikes guys out, but just maybe not as many as some others, but the dude knows how to pitch. There's a reason why he's still throwing 98 in the ninth inning. He knows how to preserve his energy throughout the game and throw just as hard, if not harder, as the game goes on. He's only 27 years old, and in 2022, last year, he pitched six complete games, one of them being a complete game shutout. Sandy is a guy the bullpen knows they can rest when he's out there, and not many runs should be scored. He is the picture-perfect ace for any team and the Marlins will need all the success they can get. Number one is pretty obvious with Trevor Bauer. Trevor Bauer, of course, is all the way in Japan this season, but I mean, who in the hell is better than this guy? He's going to make some awesome YouTube content over there while pitching like a G, so yeah, Trevor Bauer at number one. I'm kidding. Number one on my top 10 is Jacob deGrom. But here's the thing, he's gotta stay healthy. He's my top pitcher in baseball right now because of the assumption that he'll be healthy from opening day and on. So if the dude stays healthy, everything else is pretty self-explanatory. He's shown us enough over his years with the Mets that he is basically prime Pedro Martinez out there. So yeah, stay healthy, Jake. The Rangers need it, especially, but so does baseball. We all want to see you dominate. Okay, maybe not fans of teams in the AL West, but you get the point. So, this is my top 10. Go scream at me in the comments what you didn't agree with, what you did agree with, what your list is. If you want to see more ranking videos, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.